houses in the different sites and Mimi attracts mostly women, 75% of the mediators, even the uh, the participants of the community group sessions are women, so the women are very strong in this project. Um, in more than 2,600 community group sessions we organized, uh, we, uh, uh, information was provided in 28 different languages, and Arabic is the fifth most spoken language in this community group sessions. Uh, the participants in these sessions come from 147 countries, and the subjects which they needed, which they elected, the most of them was nutrition and sports. Mental health is very important for them. They want to hear something about mental health, child health, and much, much of other uh, subjects. And if I summarize, Chair, then uh, uh, Mimi has goals for Arab migrants, following uh, goals. Um, in our program, they will achieve higher qualification. That's cleared and secured by uh, research. Their image will be improved, entrepreneurial skills will be developed, financial competence will be enhanced, lifestyles will become healthier, better career chances will be opened. Much of these people later are uh, finding jobs, you know, because they are believing now that they are able to do something, you know, it empowers them, the women, for example, and they get later jobs. And uh, we want to change unemployment in jobs, and uh, we will look for young uh, um, Arab Thought Foundation ambassadors in Europe and bring them to contact with European Arab one. communities. This will create a European branch of Arab Thought Foundation, maybe. Thank you very much. This is the idea I wanted to present it to you. Thank you. Mr. Ambassador, I personally benefited from an IREX pro program. And I'm very appreciative. Uh, thank you. Thank you, uh, Yasser, and good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and thank you for being with us at this hour to hear these talks. Uh, I want to express my deep gratitude to the Arab Thought Foundation, to His Royal Highness Prince Khalid Al Faisal, to Hamad Al Amari, uh, and to the entire team that made this uh, conference successful. Uh, we are very honored to be part of this uh, process. Um, I want to focus today on some practical, simple ideas that you can take home and use uh, because I think it's very important to remember that while there is a sense of urgency which we all recognize there is time to do this right there is enormous there are enormous needs everywhere in the world and in this region that are unmet and there is talent and there is time to uh, focus on it so the first thing I want to focus on is one of the building blocks for a successful approach uh, is, to, is to ask you to remember that the essential element in any uh, plan is youth. Youth have the enthusiasm, they have the interest, youth are willing to take risk, they will go beyond the normal measures of tolerance to get something done, and it is their belief and their enthusiasm that every program uh, uh, that, uh, relies upon. Uh, IREX is an international uh, charity that has been uh, that operates in more than 110 countries around the world. Uh, we have been in the Middle East uh, for nearly two decades. Our programs here focus on youth, um, and it is from that basis that I uh, make my points today. Secondly, in addition to youth, is leadership. Leadership is the concept of owning an idea and acting on it. Leadership is a teachable skill. Some people are born leaders, some people learn leadership. Leadership is situational, but it is possible to learn leadership. And one of the things we teach our people is that every single person, like every one of you in this audience, is a leader in his or her own space. You can own the solution that you wish to achieve and you can set out to work towards that solution. We teach young people how to acquire those skills and how to use them in practical ways to inspire others to believe that something can be done and then to do it. Next concept is education. 
Education is not simply the process of learning facts. We all know that it is possible to amass facts. Education is understanding the relationship between facts. If you think about the uh, uh, Arab heritage, which uh, helped uh, Europe overcome the Dark Ages and which was the incentive for the European Enlightenment, it was not just a collection of facts. It was a concept of the way the world operates, socially, scientifically, and politically, that was inspirational. So when I talk about education, I mean comprehension of the world and people as we know it. Next, we emphasize in one of our major programs that we're developing uh, together with the uh, Arab Thought Foundation, social entrepreneurship. Social entrepreneurship is the, uh, is the concept of letting young people develop ways to operate in the business community for the benefit of the community. Creativity, which sounds like a very mysterious concept to many people, is actually just taking known facts and known concepts and putting them together in a novel way. No invention was ever created out of nothing. Everything always built on some form of knowledge that we all knew. So creativity, again, I think you saw in some of the slides earlier today, is a teachable concept and a learnable skill, and therefore I think it is something that people can operate on um, at uh, any uh, local uh, level. Next, the reason why we teach these skills and the reason why we encourage young people to become social entrepreneurs is so they will give back to the community. That is a, also a concept deeply embedded in Arab culture. It's not sufficient just to be able to do well for yourself. It's very important to do well for your entire community. And what we're talking about is not just helping an individual person become successful. Every person in the world wishes to be individually successful. It's almost impossible to find an exception. What we're talking about is how to use that as a multiplier for the community and for other people. If you find someone who can create jobs for other people, you have made, you have set loose a form of energy in the society that will keep on multiplying as people participate in it. If you act in this sense of social responsibility for the community, then you also have to remember and cultivate and preserve uh, the, the cultural heritage in which you operate. Someone said that no one exists without knowing their history. Every one of us is a product of our history, our culture, and our values, and they are positive values, and they should be embraced and enhanced. There, in our work, we encourage the process of building institutions that preserve a cultural heritage and carry that on not only for scholarship among the present generation, but for the uh, benefits of a future generation. So these uh, six things, youth, education, leadership, social entrepreneurship, community and cultural heritage form a complex of ideas that can be put to work at the local level, at a more regional level, in whatever capacity or scale that you think is, uh, is possible and which utilizes the individual energies of people who are uh, fully engaged. This is for us the best combination of a principle and successful practice to ensure continuity. And as we do this, we are very careful to measure our results. We try to avoid simply quantifying uh, numbers that are associated with our activities. We look at the impact on people's lives. This is a new discipline in the United States. It's a new discipline among charities, and we are determined to be one of the thought leaders uh, in that discipline. Someone earlier said today the, pr the purpose of this effort is to build citizens. I think that's a perfect way to capture what we're talking about. A successful person in a society contributing, giving back, and multiplying the benefits of their efforts. The purpose of every charity, to tell you the truth, 
is to work yourself out of a job. When you have passed on the lessons that you think are applicable in a society or in a community or in a group and you're not needed, then it belongs to that community. It's part of that community's heritage and it's part of that community's ongoing work. So in working uh, here in the Middle East and working with all of you, we are excited about the possibilities of dealing with many of these issues, but we are equally determined to turn over and turn back to the communities that embrace these ideas, their own leadership, their own power, their own sense of energy, their own commitment to growth for the future. Thank you very much. you do that, Mr. Ambassador? How did you calculate it to be exactly seven minutes? Long practice. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Larson. Well, good evening. And uh, it's always a, uh, a challenge to be the last person between you and a gala dinner. But I'm, I'm happy to take that challenge. Uh, my name is Dick Larson, and uh, I represent uh, MIT, and uh, also you've heard from Liz Murray and uh, Veronica Cobain, and so this is like the one-three punch on, on Link and, and Blossoms, which is a major initiative which has a, a lot of emphasis here in the Middle East. First of all, I'd like to thank all those involved with uh, Ficker 9. It's been a wonderfully organized uh, symposium. We are truly honored to be invited here, and the Arab Thought Foundation, Thank you so much for supporting us and, and uh, continuing through the years. And you also see me wearing a Saudi Aramco uh, lapel here, and that's because they have been uh, very generous in their support and sponsorship for both Link and for Blossoms. Okay, so I've got now six and a half minutes. <laughs> okay, so let's see if we can get this to work. Basically, what I'm going to talk about is a second little bit of, of a, a broader perspective on Blossoms, blended learning, open source, science, or math studies. Uh, Liz Murray and I are partners in this, and this is our major initiative now with LINK, Learning International Networks Consortium, uh, which is based at MIT. Okay, so what we're talking about here, at least in the U.S., is called STEM education. STEM means science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. Every country needs to, to create more STEM uh, young people focused on uh, careers in these kinds of areas. So Blossoms is a program that uh, is to develop a large free repository of what we call blended learning video modules to be used by math and science teachers. Those of you who heard Rana, you, you saw some of the uh, examples of its, uh, of its use in, uh, in Jordan. And we are creating these modules with, with uh, gifted volunteer teachers from around the world. Here you see Walter Lewin, who's a very famous teacher. He's got 100 videos up on YouTube and MIT OpenCourseWare. And uh, from Pakistan, we have uh, a Professor Pervez Hoodboy, who's, one of the, who's mo the most famous physics uh, teacher uh, in, in Pakistan. And he's also created a, a Blossoms interactive uh, learning module. So we're doing this jointly now with Pakistan, Jordan, Lebanon, and I put Saudi Arabia there hoping that that will be our next partner country. And by the way, this is not a closed system. We are welcoming you and your colleagues and your students and your fellow faculty members to work with us to create Blossoms modules as well. So if you think of teaching uh, STEM, this is science, technology, engineering, and math, here's one set of images that you can think of teaching STEM. This is all the mother bird feeding her chicks. Now here's another way of thinking about teaching STEM to our young, young people, let's say middle school and high school. And these young birds are learning how to fly. So you could think about teaching what I call content versus developing critical thinking skills. Now, to overstate the case, content can be equated to mother birds shoving partially digested food down the throats of her chicks. Developing critical thinking skills is analogous to teaching the young birds to fly. Both are important, both are life critical, but let's not forget the critical thinking skills. 
So the suggested attributes, basically, of a, of a STEM-educated student, they should be problem solvers, they should be innovators, inventors, self-reliant, logical thinkers, technologically literate, and able to relate their own culture and history to education. Would you like to see three examples of this? That's a picture of two of them. The third one, unfortunately, is out of the picture. These are 14-year-old Palestinian girls, three of them, who six weeks ago won a Intel Science and Engineering Fair competition in California for inventing the best yet, the best yet electronic stick cane for blind people. Those are their names. They competed with 1,611 other participants from 56 countries. And uh, apparently the girls, through various hard work over many, many months, figured out in this cane not only to tell the blind person what the level was of where they were currently walking, but holes and, and obstacles ahead of them. The first cane to do this. So, there's an example of the kind of young people we would like to generate and create and inspire. The three of them are uh, inspiring them themselves. So let's see about teaching STEM. Well, there's the traditional way. Well, let's talk about Newtonian physics. Force equals mass times acceleration. This equation means that. It can be expressed in calculus like this. And it can be used to model apples falling off of trees or the moon circling the earth. And we're going to apply it today and excite you about it. But first of all, we're going to derive 16 more equations. Well, that's one way to teach it. How about this? I just mentioned to you we need some sound. That the period of the oscillation sound, please. is independent of the mass of the object. That would mean if I join the bulb and I swing down with the bulb, that you should get that same period. Or should you not? I'm asking you a question before we do this awful experiment. You count. Wow, my expectations are high. I want to hear you loud. You ready for this? Yeah. Three, two, one. And here is the femur of an elephant. Zero. So I need a volunteer. One, two, relax. What does it remind you of? 